Exponential growth is quite explosive. People think linearly, one, two, three, and 30 steps later you're 30, but the reality of, of information technology is it's going 2, 4, 8, 16, and 30 steps later you're at a billion. So this exponential growth of computers and communications and also technologies like solar energy is going to ultimately be very explosive. Okay, so like, for instance, the Human Genome Project was a... Um, it's a very good example. Uh, people dismiss that as being... A failure. A failure halfway through the project, saying you only collected 1% of the genome, but that was right on schedule. It had been doubling every year. You double 1% seven more times, and you get 100%, and that's what happened. And it's actually continued since the end of the Genome Project. And if you look at the, the curves, it's very smooth exponential growth. Every aspect of our biological sciences is, is following that kind so of So where are we on the, because the, the secret is to get to one, right? To get to one percent, because then it's two, and then it's four, right? Well, we're actually now about one percent on these renewables of solar and wind, and it's doubling every two years. So we're only seven doublings, which is 14 years away from 100 percent, and that will, and that will continue. We're also at that kind of stage in terms of our biological technologies. We have the means of reprogramming our genes. We can turn them on, we can turn them off. We, we, have, we can simulate biological processes. So all of these things are progressing at this exponential rate. What is the, um, uh, uh, do you believe in hydrogen power? Is that, uh, do you believe in, a, are you just solar? Or do you think we need a little of this, we need a little of this, we need a little of this? Well, I think you can, we can make a very strong case that solar alone will, will meet the bill, and we have 10,000 times more sunlight than we need. We also need... Is that planet-wise or country-wise? That's planet-wise, but actually, if we devoted one small fraction of a percent of the deserts that are now unused in the United States to solar farms with the new technologies that are, will emerge in five or six years, uh, we could meet all of our energy needs. We also need storage technologies, and that's also coming with nanotechnology, and some of that uses hydrogen. How come we're not hearing about this? I mean, there's nobody... I, I, I've talked to... Well, venture well, capitalists are aware of it. In fact, Al, yeah, but Al Gore actually b belongs now to Kleiner Perkins, which is investing billions of dollars in these kinds of technologies. So he's heard of it by now. Yeah. Because uh, there are investments going in these new technologies. Here, here's the thing. Uh, all, of our, all of our leaders are, uh, they seem to be blocking everything every step of the way, um, and there doesn't seem to be anybody who is articulating a grand vision. There's no, there, I'm looking for the president who's going to say, okay, peak oil, no peak oil, doesn't matter, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, and we're going to have a moonshot. If you say, uh, and, and uh, well, assume you can... The scientists are saying, we just had a National Science Foundation, National Academy of Engineering, Blue Ribbon panel with Larry Page and uh, Dean Kamen and Craig Venter and myself and we came out with this plan to replace fossil fuels within 20 years with, with solar energy and store it in nano-engineered fuel cells and we also came out with some other ideas to overcome disease with by reprogramming our biochemistry through biotechnology and uh, move towards virtual reality and a few other See, things. I, you know, I have to tell you, you had me until you said um, Dean Kamen, because I think the guy is brilliant, but I mean, the segue, he promised it would revolutionize it. I mean, it would revolutionize New York, but you can't even, they won't even let you have one in New York. Well, he, he actually has a cool water machine, which for a few billion dollars would meet the water needs of Africa. So, I mean, there are new emerging okay. technologies that are, that can meet our material needs. So when people worry about overpopulation, from extending human longevity, uh, they need to look at these new technologies which will give us the energy and water and other material resources we need. What does transportation look like? Car gone? Well, the first thing, we'll move towards electric cars, ultra-hybrids, plug-in. And we just yeah, we plug them in from the solar panels? And we'll be putting sol solar panels and other solar technologies on the grid. Uh, we have, you know, more, more than enough sunlight to do that. The, um, my son is three. I have a daughter that's two, son that's three. Uh, my son is three. I have a daughter that's two, son that's three, um, and a couple of teenagers. If I was to concentrate on one thing with my younger kids, what should I concentrate on? What should I, what should I prepare them for? What kind of life, what kind of job, what kind of world well uh, 
everything is being transformed. I, mean, I speak at a lot of different conferences, and music conferences sound like computer conferences, and art, graphic arts conferences sound like computer conferences. So they should uh, understand the technology, but they should follow their passion. People usually have some thing they're passionate about, and every, as every different kind of field is going to be contributing to our future knowledge. Human knowledge is doubling every year. We need our technology to keep track of it, and we can access it now with a few keystrokes. This is really the this devices is, in our pockets. So. This is the this is this is the revenge of the geeks, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. the geeks are going to rule the world. They are. They are. Yeah. In case you haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be back in just a second. New technology, an incredible invention, literally changing the lives of blind people. You'll see it in just a minute. Back with Ray Kurzweil. Um, he's going to show us the um, KNFB reader. Uh, this is um, if you're if you're blind, you you turn it on like that. Yeah, this is a reading machine. It's five thousand times smaller than the first one we introduced. It's four ounces. Reads in seven languages. So I just uh, just take, take a picture, a picture of, of a page. Now, how does a blind person do that? It actually will guide the blind person. If, it's, if you're cutting off the left side of the page, it'll tell you move to the left. Oh, you're kidding me. It rotates the page automatically, uncurves it. So it, it, one degrees counterclockwise relative to the page. So it uh, is rotating the image. So it just told you. And it displays what it's reading. Here, here. Examples above were research projects. So if you're dyslexic, you can read it ago. and hear it at the same time. Most transportation okay. would be crippled. Most communications would fail. This was not the that's case. A, that's a, a, amazing. So how many of these? How many of these are out, and what does it cost? We just uh, introduced this. Uh, so this is about a thousand uh, blind guys and gals and dyslexics individuals uh, using this, reading menus, signs on the wall, handouts at meetings. Uh, it's about two thousand dollars. It's amazing. I, you know, I have a dyslexic friend. He's um, uh, he's a brilliant guy, and dyslexic hates to read. Has to listen to everything. I, I have to tell him about this. How yeah. much is it again? Two thousand dollars. Wow. I was gonna say I'd get him, but two thousand nine. Not good of a friend. <laughs> what is the um, what is the thing that um, what's the holy grail for you? What's the thing that you like? If I could just do this, I'd like to invent or what is it? Well, ultimately, it's computers that match human intelligence. I mean, that, that is really going to enable us to solve a lot of other problems because we'll be able to expand our intelligence. But doesn't scare you? I mean, I've watched too many sci-fi movies. Doesn't scare you at all that they're like, boy, this, you know, the problem is I got to keep man safe by killing him. That, that, you know, that kind of thing. Well, if you look at what technology has been doing, it does a little bit of both. It's both creative and destructive, but I think we're a lot better off than we were several hundred years ago. Thomas Hobbes described life as short, brutish, disaster-prone, disease-filled, poverty-filled. He was a happy guy. I wanted to party with him. Well, that, uh, <laughs> that was what life was like 300 years ago. Right. So we've come a long way. And ultimately, extending our physical reach and our mental reach is what our technology is all about. Uh, you say that uh, in 2020-something or other, that virtual reality be 3d you'll be able to smell it you'll be able to see it it'll i, I don't know is like a hologram or uh, well, I, I actually give a third of my speeches using a three-dimensional virtual reality technology where it looks like i'm at the venue in 3d visual and auditory and ultimately that will be ubiquitous so we have virtual worlds like second life that are cartoon like now but if you go out 10 years they'll be very realistic ultimately and it'll be like that'll replace like the television that's going to replace meetings. We'll be able to do what you and I are doing now, even if we're hundreds of miles apart. And ultimately, we'll be able to do that with all of the senses, with virtual reality from within the nervous system. Does I mean, virtual reality, does it, does it, um, does it all uh, concern you that, that, it seems to me, that through television and everything else, there's, there's a lack of understanding of what's real and what's not real. I mean, we, we start to blur these lines yeah. and... Well, we're going to actually be living in a blending of real and virtual reality, and it won't always be clear what's real and what's virtual. So, again, but let me go but back to the, not the technology, but the philosophy of that technology. Well, virtual reality is real reality. The telephone is virtual reality. It's as if you're together, as far as talking is concerned. 
And you can't say, oh, that agreement I made with you last night, that was just in virtual reality. That's not a real agreement. I mean, virtual environments are real environments. R real reality just got big, bigger because we've created these virtual worlds and these virtual spaces. And it's a, just a place for us to be. We can recreate earthly environments, fantastic environments that have no earthly counterpart, and be with each other in these virtual environments. I, 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 I got to ask the being with each other in virtual environments without being crass. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there are people that are going to say, you know what I'm saying? Well, today, I mean, not, I mean, let, I mean today just take as low not, brow as you can get. That's where I'm at right now. Well, that's probably accurate for today's virtual reality. But, uh, I mean, look at video games, how they went from Pong to the how highly realistic they are today. And right. The same thing will happen with virtual reality. Today, it's cartoon-like. In the future, it's going to be just like what we're doing now. And no, 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 not, not what we're doing now. You know, what I'm this is the lowest brow interview you've ever done, isn't it, Ray? No, this no. is great. We're <laughs> covering a lot of ground quickly. <laughs> yes, okay. I have very short attention span. Are you, um, are you at all afraid? Uh, um, because history repeats itself, and man has struggled and gained freedom and then collapsed, and then grown and gained more freedom and collapsed. Are you, are you at all concerned? Are we? Do you believe we're past the point of there's no going back from here? This is, it's always going to... Well, there's no going back, but there are dangers. For example, the same technology that's going to help us overcome cancer could be applied by a bioterrorist to reprogram a biological virus to be more deadly and more communicable. And that's, that's actually a specter we face right now. I've, I've actually worked on this with the Army. The good news is we actually have the ideas to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we need to create a rapid response system that for biological a, viruses. I'm trying to remember, I read a book from, uh, he used to run the uh, weapons program over in, in Russia. And he said, that's the difference between us here in America and over in the former Soviet Union. They just created the nasty weapon. We always created, okay, wait, 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 wait. How do you cure that? How do you, and they were just doing the, ooh, this is nasty and ugly. Well, the Soviet Union did create a lot of nasty weapons. Yeah. Unfortunately, none of them got out yet. But yeah. uh, we do need to set up rapid response systems where we can protect ourselves. Okay. Final thoughts and what the future looks like. Rapid fire uh, next. And become information. Don't you wish you knew what the hell he was even talking about? Um... Uh, what will withstand the test of time? Uh, in other words, what won't technology replace? Human relationships. Uh, being, uh, I think we covered that being, one. Being attracted to each other. Future, uh, future uh, of privacy. Uh, actually, I think privacy is going to win. because It's a technical issue, but encryption has won over decryption. So we'll so be able your, to keep our messages. Private. Would your body be encrypted then? Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, we encrypt our email and, and cell phone calls today, right. and we're going to encrypt... But, All the stuff running in but our But you know what? I talked to, um, I talked to uh, Michael Chertoff and, uh, oh, who was it? Um, somebody else high up in the government. And they said they never use email. They said if you just knew how accessible everything was, you just never put it out there. It's encrypted, and you can protect it. Yeah. And it's certainly a powerful tool. I oh, can, they're, reading your, they're never... reading your email right now. Is there, is there an afterlife? We're going to be able to actually save who we are right i mean right now we don't actually protect all this really valuable information okay in so brain. you see us you don't believe you don't you don't believe the soul uh, i uh i don't know you're agnostic yeah yeah um uh, world population in 50 years it's not going to increase that much it might double or triple um uh, culture america is it as we see it is the is the world one or American culture is taking over, which is the idea of ideas expanding our capability, entrepreneurship. Okay. Uh, I gotta go. I'm getting five. I'm getting five seconds. I'm sorry, we are out of time. What a pleasure, <laughs> sir. Ray Kurzweil from New York. Good night, America. <laughs>